Welcome everyone to a new in-cabin use case tutorial for the Universe platform. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, uh, cameras, sensors, active lights, basically all capturing devices that you can configure um, in, in the Universe Studio to capture the images uh, for your data sets. So let's focus on the um, ego element in the simulation in the uh, template workspace uh, for the in-cabin that we've seen before in other tutorials. Um, here in the ego is where we're going to be placing all the cameras. And uh, in the in the template, you have two cameras pre-configured and one um, active light pre-configured as well. The ego basically um, is where we're going to be positioned, where we're going to be moving around in the, in the, inside the cabin holding the cameras and then we're going to be um, basically enabling or disabling the camera that we want to use in that specific position. Uh, these two cameras have um, prefixes uh, CC for central console and RVM for rear view mirror. Um, these cameras have exactly the same configuration so this means that they are exactly the same type of camera. The only thing that's going to change is that uh, when we enable the CC camera, we're going to be positioning the ego in the central console position. And when we enable the rear view mirror camera, uh, we're going to be positioning the uh, ego in the rear view mirror um, position. This is a design uh, decision that we've made. Uh, we're going to be using only one single camera, but um, we are we have the possibility of having different types of camera in the in two positions. So that's why we have two cameras and then we move the ego to a specific position and we just enable and disable uh, the cameras that we're going to be using and disabling the ones that we're not going to be using. However, if you want to have several cameras in the cabin at the same time and you want to be taking uh, captures uh, of the same scene uh, with the two cameras at the same time, that is possible as well, okay? In a more advanced tutorial, we, we will be talking about how to do that. But for the time being, and the way the in-cabin add-on works, this means that uh, we will have, uh, we, we can have several cameras in the ego, each of them with a specific prefix, and um, we will be moving the ego to the positions of the, um, where the different cameras should be placed, okay? So let's take a look at um, how do you find, how do you define a camera in, in Anivers Studio? Uh, the most important configuration, it's probably the resolution, like what's the resolution of your camera? And this is important as well uh, because the resolution tells us what are the amount of pixels that we have to calculate at render time. And those pixels will be subtracted to uh, from the um, gigapixels that you have configured in your account. Uh, if you're using a trial, you will have three gigapixels for you to generate images. And you can generate as many images um, as three gigapixels allow you, depending on the resolution of your cameras, all right? Um, other things that you can configure here are the film size and an important one will be the lens type. The distortion um, that we're going to be simulating that your lens provides. Typically for incoming, we're going to be using fisheye diagonal or fisheye circular. Uh, these are equidistant fisheye distortion, uh, very typical for incoming. Uh, the circle will give you a picture with a classical circle uh, in the middle, the fisheye circle with that equidistant distortion, and the diagonal will give you um, the same distortion, but instead of giving you the circle, it will give you um, a crop of that circle that it's um, tangential inside the uh, the circle. Okay. Um, another possibility that you have is that if you have um, a specific camera and you want to simulate exactly the distortion that that camera gives you. We all know that cameras are not perfect, so the equidistant, which is an analytical simulation of the distortion, may not apply to you exactly. So you you and you have your own camera. You can physically calibrate that camera 
And uh, the result of that calibration will be the intrinsics. Uh, and you can provide those intrinsics to any studio, the, the center of the, of the lens that is not exactly, typically exactly at the center. Um, and then the coefficients for the barrel distortion and the coefficients, the P0 and P1 for the tangential distortion. So if you have all these coefficients or, you, or some of those coefficients, that depends on how you calibrate your cameras, you can punch them in here and simulate that distortion. Um, right? So that's um, for you to know. Um, when in this tutorial and throughout the, all the tutorials of the uh, incoming uh, use case using the the incoming add-on, we're going to be using the fish diagonal with a field of view 130 degrees. Um, we calculate the focal length corresponding to this uh, automatically under the covers. So you just have to specify here the, the field of view you want from the fish eye and we'll capture that. All right. Um, so good. Now, next next step on, on what can you configure uh, about the cameras. Um, Sensor and ISP. You can see that we are not configuring any sensor or any ISP in these cameras, not in this one nor this one. Okay, that's uh, no entry here. Um, and that is because we're going to be generating RGB um, images coming out uh, directly from, from, the, from the render, not applying any sensor simulation. If you have a sensor and you want to simulate your sensor, you can do so. I will show you in, in, in a little bit uh, how you configure sensors and what can you configure about sensors, okay? Um, for this tutorial, we're not going to be using sensors, but um, it's, uh, it's important to, to know that uh, if you want to simulate uh, near-infrared imagery, uh, you can do it as well. Um, and the in-cabin add-on uh, is ready for you to simulate near infrared imagery, um, and when you when you do that, what we're going to be doing is automatically and programmatically selecting the near infrared sensor that we have already in the uh, in cabin uh, template and the near infrared ISP that we have here as well. Okay, but we will select this automatically. Okay, for RGB and uh, during these tutorials, we're going to be talking about RGB. Um, we may do a near infrared tutorial later on, but for RGB, you don't need the, this this sensor simulation. Um, however, if you want to simulate your RGB sensor, we will show you how to do this in a minute. Okay, right. The the active light. Um, in, in Anyverse, you can configure any active light that you want or any uh, external illumination that you want. Besides the sun and the physical sky, we can simulate sources of light. Um, we have this in cabin um, uh, active light configured here uh, for the near infrared simulation that we do. Uh, you can see that the um, profile of emission, it's in the red. Okay, so this is close to what near infrared cameras do. They um, emit in a particular wavelength in the near infrared spectrum, so it doesn't bother the driver. Um, but for us to simulate near infrared imagery, we're going to be illuminated with red light. Okay, and I will show you later that the near infrared sensor that we simulate uh, allows to go. Um, into the sensor all the wavelengths to generate like a black and white um, image that uh, resembles, looks like the near-infrared um, images that, that you can get with a near-infrared camera. Okay, enough of that. Uh, let's uh, go into the sensors. Uh, I mentioned that we have a couple of sensors um, already configured in the workspace. One is the near infrared sensor, and another one is an RGB sensor. Let me select the RGB sensor, so because we're going to be talking about RGB imagery. So, if we have, um, if you want to simulate your own sensor, you just basically have to punch in here the characteristics of your sensor. This is a good approximation of a normal RGB sensor using the color filter array, uh, the Bayer color filter array RGGB. 
uh, RGGB, um, you have uh, other possibilities here because the Anywhere sensor simulation, it's parametrical and it's open to simulate any sensor. Okay, this is just one example. Uh, other things that you can figure in the sensor is the, the pixel size, well capacity, uh, different types of noise, uh, and quantum efficiency curves. This is what makes Anywhere's uh, render uh, different from, from others. Uh, the Anywhere's render is hyperspectral. That means that we have uh, the energy for the different um, wavelengths and the quantum efficiency curves tells you how much of that energy is consumed by the sensor uh, dependent on the wavelength. So this is uh, actually very important. So once you have uh, all your, your sensor configured here, you can apply it to any camera as I showed you before. Let me stop a little bit on the near infrared sensor that is used to generate uh, near infrared imagery. So basically here, what we have is a CCCCC um, color filter rate. So we let in all the, um, all the light, all the energy, and we apply the same parameters uh, for all of them. And this will actually generate, will generate a black and white um, uh, image. And we generate a black and white image because we have a near infrared ISP that has a non color filter array to reconstruct all the colors. So it will mix everything and generate um, uh, a black and white. Uh, we have no color balance and no um, color mapping from one color map to another. It's just the identity matrices to go from one color map to the next one. And we just apply a little gamma correction. So this is what we do with, uh, with a near-infrared ISP to generate near-infrared um, imagery or a simulation of the near-infrared imagery. If you want to simulate your own uh, sensor and you want to uh, have an ISP that will reconstruct color uh, out of the raw image that the sensor simulation generates, this is an example of... Um, an RGB ISP that will uh, create an RGB image simulating a specific sensor. Okay, so with this, um, we have finished this, this uh, tutorial and I hope to see you in the next one where we will talk about um, other aspects of the uh, in-cabin simulation and how to use it uh, with Anywhere Studio. Thank you very much.